Hello. Welcome to Bible Time. Today we're going to read a story from the New Testament. It's found in Acts chapter 2. And it's all about God's super helper. Let's look at a picture of what someone thinks it might have been like when Jesus went up to heaven. Here he is ascending into the clouds. For Jesus' friends, there was good news and bad news. The good news, Jesus was alive. The bad news, Jesus was leaving. Now it was up to them to spread the word about God's kingdom. As soon as Jesus told them this, he disappeared into the sky. But there was still more news, good news and bad news. More good news, he promised to send them a helper. More bad news, they had no idea who that helper was or how he would help them. And worse, Jesus' friends were scared. The Jewish leaders, the Sadducees and Pharisees had arrested Jesus. What if they decided to arrest Jesus' friends too? All of Jesus' friends were meeting together to pray. They were trying not to attract too much attention so they wouldn't get into trouble. One day passed, then two days, then three. There was no sign of the helper that Jesus had promised them. Four days passed, five days, six days, nothing. And then, boom! It was the tenth day since Jesus had left, and all his friends were praying together in one big room. Suddenly, a sound like a huge wind filled the house. It was pretty weird, but then things even got weirder. Little flames of fire, not actual fire, but something that looked like fire, appeared in the air and came down over each one of their heads while they prayed. It was the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Remember when Jesus was baptized? Something that looked like a dove came down from the sky and rested on Jesus. It was the Spirit of God coming to show that God's power was with Jesus. And now, the same thing was happening to Jesus' friends. These little flames of fire were a sign that God's power was now with each one of them. Let's look at a picture of what this might have been like. Here are some of the friends. Here are some more. What kind of power? Well, the first thing that happened was that everyone in the room began speaking in different languages, languages they didn't even know. This was really helpful because Jews who spoke many different languages were visiting Jerusalem that week from all over the Roman world. Suddenly, all these visitors heard Jesus' friends speaking to them in their own language. Then the Holy Spirit gave Jesus' disciple Peter the power to stand up and speak an amazing message about who Jesus was. After Peter proclaimed the good news that day, Nearly 3,000 people who heard him speak became followers of Jesus. Suddenly, Jesus' disciples, the same ones who had been hiding together to stay out of trouble, were bravely talking about Jesus all over Jerusalem. Stop talking about Jesus or we will arrest you too, the Sadducees and Pharisees threatened. 
But the disciples didn't care. Filled with God's power, they were now the bravest people on earth. I will show you a picture of the Sadducees and Pharisees telling Jesus' friends to stop talking about Jesus. This wasn't the first time God's Spirit had filled someone with power. Kings like Saul and David had been filled with the Spirit of God, and some of Israel's judges and prophets were filled with God's power when there was a big job to do. But before now, only certain people at certain times were filled with the Spirit of God. And if they disobeyed God like King Saul did, God's spirit was taken away. This was very different. Jesus didn't just send the Holy Spirit to help a few special people do a few special things. This was much better than that. Now, for the first time ever, God's spirit and God's power were available to all of Jesus' friends. And not just for a little while, but forever. Yep, Jesus changed everything. He didn't leave his friends alone. Instead, he gave them a superpower, the power of the Holy Spirit, so they could go out and change the world. Remember the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is our helper. When we give our hearts to Jesus, he puts his Holy Spirit inside us. Then when we need help, we can stop to listen or feel what he is saying or how he is leading us. Now I'd like to give you a couple questions to talk about and think about. Why do you think God used fire to show his superpower? How can you use God's superpower in your life? Let's take a moment to close with a word of prayer. Dear God, thank you for sending us a super helper and filling us with your superpower so we can spread the good news of your love and rescue plan. Amen.